going hot. All right, little brother, we are live, and welcome to the first official Going Hot podcast with Caleb Shaw. Um, man, if I had to pick a way to do my very first podcast, it would be this, right here with my little brother. Um, Jared, thank you. I'm so excited to have yeah. you here. Um, I don't think you have a bigger supporter or fan than who's sitting across from the table from you right now, man. Yeah. It's uh, And that goes back our whole lives pretty much. Well, we'll get to that, but there's... There was sometimes I was a little scared of you when you were younger, and you yeah. likewise, you know, fair likewise. enough. But uh, no, so we're here today for all sorts of reasons. But the big one is the terminal list, man. Like that's yeah. you've had so many achievements in your life. You've done so many things. Um, as a big brother, it's hard for me to even pick one because I, like I said, I've been your biggest fan as long as I know, and you've given me plenty to be proud of. But right now we have something really big going on coming up july 1st with the yeah. terminal list depending on when this airs it might already be out and i just don't even know where to start man like i'm super proud of you you this is years in the work or, or at least a year and a half two years you know a lot of times people see when they hits the screen or hits the tv you know they think it had just started but man this was in the works a long time ago and yes. and so um <clears throat> thank you yeah. thanks for being here man well thank you this is uh this is my first first podcast as well. So here we are, first podcast, man. I get to do it with my big brother. Yeah, you know, and, and that's something, you know, we'll, we'll get to, but you're not a big social media guy. Like, no. you know, and, and I probably one of the things I get hit up on the most is, hey, <clears throat> I can't, why can't I find your brother on social media? It's mm -hmm. your brother on social media. I mean, it's, it's all the time, and I've even picked up a few followers of people that, well, we'll take the second best. We can't get yeah. Jared. We'll follow Jared <laughs> or follow Caleb to find Jared. So, yeah. um, but I'll take it. I, I like keeping tabs on you anyway and stuff. But, you know, why don't you have social media? Just curious on that note. Man, I... I think it stems from obviously the world that I come from, the community that I come from. You know, we we always we're, we're known as silent professionals flying under the radar. So I came into it with that, you know, with kind of that stigma of like, dude, I I don't need social media. I don't want social media. You know, I don't want people knowing who I am, where I am, that whole thing. And you know, I've been out for what nine years now. I think enough time has passed, you know, and I'm working on stuff like this where I'm somewhat out in the in the public eye, but. It's just, I, I see so much of the social media stuff and, and people on there, you know, and how it affects their lives, how it affects their decisions, you know, and I look at it as, <clears throat> I'm, I'm kind of a quiet grinder, you know, I try to do my stuff, not, I don't need everybody to, to see it, I just need to do it, and if people see it, great, they see it, but I have so much within me that I need to work on and get better at before I go and start showing the world like hey do this do that like and don't get me wrong i see jocko's podcast i see joe rogan's i see goggins you know i see those guys who you know were, were people that i look look up to people that i'm inspired by but i'm like man i gotta sharpen myself quite a bit more before i'm ever in that that the pre, the the public eye like that and i don't know that i ever will be mm -hmm. honestly you know we've talked about it a little bit the the uh the industry i'm in now is not it's not the the best idea to not mm -hmm. have social media I'll be honest, kind of that fires me up a little bit too. I'm like, all right, well, maybe I do. Well, you know, there, there's way. something to be said for going your own way and, exactly and right. blazing your own trail and doing it your way. And yeah. if everybody else has social media, you automatically stick out by not having social media. Right. And it, the, the curiosity to seek you out because you're not putting it out there. Right. Um, I mean, shoot, you got me and your mom stalking you all the time, uh, trying to figure out what's going on, you know, and, and uh, um, yeah, that you won't be able to hide under the radar much once you start putting everything out there yeah. and, and stuff. But, you know, I, it will be hard for me to ever see you on true social media because mm -hmm. you're, it, it just seems like an oxymoron almost. That's, that's why the, the unofficial Instagram for you is Jared will never be on IG, you know, yeah. Jared is never going to be on IG because it, even if you're on social media, I just can't see you on social media. I, I just, nah. and, and I don't know the, the, it almost, the way social media is going, I don't even know if you need to be anymore because you, you can set a standard and, and like you said, it's almost, you're the guy that's not on there. So that's, that's curiosity right there. Yeah. That, that I, I think there's up. a value to that, you know, and it's like I said, it's not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons that I've kind of, you know, grown into a bit and, and it's not, 
that I'm trying to be stubborn. It's just like, why? Like you said, why mm-hmm. do I really need that right now? Is that, is that what I need? And is that what I need to, to promote what I'm trying to do? Am I trying to promote what I'm doing? Do I need to promote it? I mean, there's the, the stuff that I've been blessed enough to work on. There's people paid to do that. So do I, you know what I yeah, mean? Like, like, I'm lucky to just be here. Yeah, much less like, like I'm good. good. Yeah. yeah. We're good. It's, so. Well, you know what, on that note, you know, like we just discussed earlier, you just got back from the premiere of, of the terminal list, you know, and, and I saw the pictures of it. I, I tried to fit in your luggage. It didn't work, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I went for it. It didn't work, but, uh, you know, I watched that and I saw you out there and, and it was just really cool. And, and, you know, and I, I see you up there, you, you've got Chris Pratt up there, Antoine, Antoine Fuquay. Um, I'm a big fan of his, you know, all the way back going to training day, right. training day was one of those, one of the first movies that I watched that, Gave me that weird feeling. I don't know how to explain it. it but there's it. a couple of them, like a, a um, Training Day, End of Watch. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's some yeah. other ones that they just give you that, like, you go to dark places in those movies, and, and they, they bring out a grit. And a, mm-hmm. But but Training Day was one of the first ones with Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke that I watched, and I was just like, oof. Like, oh, yeah. That was that first, like, movie that I felt like took you to the dark side in a good storytelling way. Yeah. And, oh, you and, named and, your shotgun after yeah, the shotgun. They, yeah, we, we can't say that, but yes, yeah. I, I did. And, and <laughs> right. it was an influential movie, you know, right. because it was it was just so well produced and put together. Right. And, and it, it just, you know, and our dad was a narcotics cop at the mm-hmm. time, so of course it hit extra close to home and, and, and all of that. But big fan of Anton Fuquay since that, yeah. you know, and, and because that was a, a good one. So I, as a fan, was excited as these steps with terminal started when I found out he was involved and, and all of that, you know, it, it, that was exciting to me. What was it like for somebody like you? And I I know terminal is not your first thing. We'll, we'll get to some of that later. Right. But it was a, a, this was the the first one where you were also involved and part of it. And, you know, and a, and a lot of the, I would argue or, or as an overly biased big brother that you had a lot to do with this, even making it to the point of us talking about it here, you know, and, and, and years in the making and, and all of that. But what was it like for you when you were standing on that stage, kind of looking around? Because when I went to the Jurassic premiere with you, a lot of the times, you know, we found ourselves standing off to the side, just watching and, yeah. and still enjoying that brother time, but kind of from the outside, right. you know, and different. Yeah. And, and, but you weren't on the outside this time. You were on the right. inside, you were on the stage, you were right. part of it. I know, like my my heart was just coming out of my chest watching you, just proud of you up on that stage. What was like? What was it like for you being up up there? Yeah, man, it's. Uh, I think we gotta we gotta reverse a little bit. You know, you're talking about Antoine Fuqua, and, and you know, for you it was Training Day. For me, it was Tears of the Sun. He did. I forgot yeah, about yeah. Tears of the so Sun he, until you just said that. Yeah, Bruce me, Willis gives me goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, that like, Navy Seal yeah, movie. Yeah, yep, yep, and Nick. I always say his name wrong. He's in Terminalist. Sorry, Nick. Uh, Nick Chenlin, I think, is his name. He he played. That sounded a, really good. Thank you. Nailed yeah, it. First nailed it. Try. Yeah. yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> but he plays uh, on Terminalist a seal, but he also played a seal uh, uh, on Tears of the Sun. And so you know, you ask about the whole experience. We go back to the beginning. You know, of of finding the book that whole deal with Jack Carr, which we'll get into later. But then having a meeting with Antoine Fuqua, you know, years before this mm-hmm. ever came about. And Kat Samick, who is one of his producers, Chris and myself, you know, we go and we were, I think, Soho House somewhere in L.A. And this is like my first type of <laughs> I remember you were texting me. Oh, and, yeah, buddy. And uh, you're n- saying n- just that, like, nervous. hey, yeah. this is big yeah. boy stuff here we're doing. Yeah, nervous, like, down what I was going to wear down to my underwear. No joke. I'm like, okay, I wear these underwear, and then if the meeting goes well, I'll wear these underwear every other meeting, you know, <laughs> all that. I'm wearing these underwear, not not hey. even joking. Same, same. Well, I mean, there's Antoine Fuqua, yeah. Caleb Shaw, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's same. Right same. there, bro. So, so, uh <laughs> So, yeah, I go to this meeting, you know, and, and it's the same deal. Like, I'm trying to play it cool, you know. I come from the SEAL teams. I'm supposed to be cool, this whole thing. And, I mean, super nervous, you know. And I got there, and, yeah, going in with that baggage of, of training day, tears of the sun, you know, hit just everything that dude brought to the table. I'm like, oh, man. A little bit nervous Yeah, here. exactly. <laughs> it's easier to get shot at than go face yeah, these guys. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> like, absolutely, you know. And so – Man, we go and we, I, I meet him, we sit down and, and have dinner and start talking out this project. And it was one of those surreal moments, you know, and these have happened 
it, to to all of us as adults throughout our lives, those defining moments, things things that you think about, you know. But that was one of them. I remember sitting there looking across from him. I'm like, dude, this is like this is unbelievable, right? Sitting now. here with the man, right? Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. And and the respect I have for that man, you, you know, is is it's hard to even put into words because what he does for our community, what he did for this project, the way that he, and the, and I talk about it a little bit on those videos, but the authenticity, not only that he wanted, but he demanded, you know? And so when something came up, when there'd be questions, there'd be whatever, if we said something and somebody else said something different, there was no, there was no debate. There was no anything. Mr. Fuqua was like, that's what they said. That's how we're doing it. You know? And there was never, and he, he stayed tried and true the whole way through that, you know? And so it started there, you know, with, with, him with cat with that foundation of knowing like okay this is going to be right and then you know obviously we have chris who we've both known chris for however many years now like the man respects the the community the, the man respects the job you know and so when this came about i mean he was the same way i remember conversations with him and antoine going back and forth being on the same page of like yep this is how we got to do this this is how it has to be done right and from day one till the, the last day of filming, last day of post-production, man, they held true on that. Both of them are EPs on it, executive producers, held true on that to make sure, like, this is something we can put our name on. This is something I can put my name on that, you, you know, guys from my community, there's going to be little things that we get hit on, of course. But overall, man, I... I well, because you I don't want to show it. actual, you know, tactics, tactics and, and stuff like that, Can't you know, that. because we'll there's still do guys downrange. Down right. So that's very important, you know, there's, there's authenticity still of... You know how you hold the gun, move the gun, stuff right. like that. But you're not going to reveal actual tactics. How to clear a room you, or exactly, do something, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, you know, to, to really long-winded answer to your question, being up there, you, you know, when, like you said, that the whatever other premiere, Jurassic World, I think, like you said, we went to that was that was an experience. We mm -hmm. had fun, you know. That was, but it was totally different. This one you know it was i'm like wow this is you know this everything has come together for this moment you know and it was a blessing it was blessing being in that moment and seeing it and seeing all the people that worked on it you know and all the camaraderie you know and just in front of the camera behind the camera everybody you it's know still real dude it was it well, was and, a blessing and that that brings me to another point is one of the things that i noticed and that i like about you guys is how you you bring in your people and mm -hmm. and one of the things that was neat to me is when I saw you up on that stage, it was more than being with a cast and a crew. It was also being with your brothers and Absolutely. your friends. And and I respect, you know, guys yeah. like Ray Mendoza. Yeah, that yeah. that, that photos. I mean, yeah, it's a bunch of studs and a lot of testosterone in that yeah. photo, you know. But yeah. but a lot of those dudes are are legit warriors, and real and real. I appreciate that you guys uh, uh, get that authenticity by bringing in these real warriors right. that. You know, you give them a chance to show their skills while they're not truly being shot at. And I, right. I know that was something is, is your big brother, and I know the rest of the family can attest to this. You know, the ten and a half years you were in your, the SEALs, mm -hmm. we held our breath right. every time, especially when you were downrange, especially when you were, you know, in theater doing stuff and, and all that. It, it, And especially once the SEALs got more popular after the Bin Laden mission. And, right. and you know, it was just because then every tragedy w involving the SEALs was world news. And, yeah, right. you know, and, and we were blessed in our home as far as we always got you home. But there was others that didn't come home. And, right. and, and so I think it's really neat to fast forward and, and see all you guys not really being shot at, right. but getting to show what studs you are and, you. and getting to, you know, because, hey, what do you do when you get out of the SEAL teams and you're really good at dusting and smoking people? I mean, it. Right. what do you do? Right. You know, and here's something that you guys have found that you can throw <laughs> yourselves into. You can still have that camaraderie. You can still yeah. take care of each other, but the bullets are fake, you right. know, yeah. and yeah. I I enjoyed that. That's, that's neat to me to see that and to see all those veterans up there and, and, the way you guys just look out for each other like that, I, I, I think it's a really strong thing. Yeah, well, I, I I agree, and I appreciate it. And, man, it's um, it's like with anything, you know, in the SEAL teams, you don't really have a choice who you work with, but when you meet great people, you want to work with those people. You know, and, and that's, you know, a, a blessing about the SEAL teams is you're working with the best people in the world you know like you every day are struggling to keep up with them you know what i mean like and 
like iron sharpens iron. It's accountability. You want to be the best you can be to protect that man on the left of you, the man on the right of you, you know, and when you grow those friendships and that camaraderie, man, you want to hold on to it, you know, so being able to, <clears throat> like you said, transition out of the SEAL, the SEAL teams, what's next? What do you, what do you do? And that's where, you know, like God is good, man. God is good. Like a, a lot of people hold on to that identity. They believe that that's what makes them who they are. And I remember you and I talking before I ever went into the military and, and saying like, man, I, I won't let this, if I make this, you know, if I become a SEAL, I won't let it change me. I can't let it change me. From know? day one, we've said that. Yeah. You will be Jared Shaw. There was a Navy yep. SEAL, not Navy SEAL, Jared Shaw. That's it. That's right, man. And and unfortunately, there's people that, yeah, hold on to that ide identity and don't know what to do with it. And don't get me wrong, when I got out, there was, there was a struggle with that of like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to carry myself? What am I supposed, you know what I mean? And, and that's where I say God is good. You know, God took care of me and, and opened these doors and, and presented opportunities that have put me in this chair right here, put me with the, uh, the ability to be able to, to be able to work on things like this. And so, yeah, you know, going on, on a project like this and, and work and being able to bring our guys on guys like Ray Mendoza, you know, who, when this, book got pitched years ago ray and i talked about it like buddy like you're i need you on this i need like ray is a different level man like i i've been a fan of his since active uh, valor i remember I, he did the water exit yeah. it, it, one of my favorite scenes and, all, that, and, yeah. and i'm gonna get i'm gonna do the spoiler if you haven't seen active valor you need to go see people need to see active yeah. valor but yeah that boat scene when they do that wet entry i don't even Bad know if that's what it's called but it, it's one of my favorite cinematic things yeah. ever when he when he wrecks that he rolls out the deal and, yeah. and then that that boat comes around just yeah. lights up Getting the, the yeah bro. i mean that was yeah. so i've been a fan of his mm -hmm. since I remember. then and then yeah. he went on and, and worked on lone survivor and and but it's it's always been the iron sharpens iron you guys mm -hmm. he made it here hey jared i'm grabbing you for this you made it yeah. here you're grabbing him over he there just pulled me on a project in georgia you know got me a role on that and worked together that he was tech advising but yeah he's he's a different level like i'm a i'm a decent tech advisor and but i have a question i go to ray you know and ray's just he's calm cool all the time you know and it's just a wealth of knowledge and without him on this project man i mean it would be it would be a totally different totally different deal and then yeah we were able to bring on i don't know seven just for this scene i think we had maybe seven other team guys on there all in the tunnels and that was one thing Fuqua and how, Chris, how come nobody called the air force guy to come rocket with the seals well, is there some kind of joke that like air force guys aren't, aren't no up season there with two seals? bro we're bringing you on I mean, for I season always two thought it was like air force and then seals you know something like, just below right uh, right i mean just just below the like seals our height were. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i mean i'm a little taller just, than the seals that's it bit. yeah <laughs> we're bringing you on second season nah, i uh i'll tell you what dude i when i put on my kit and i try to walk around with all my stuff I'm not a Navy SEAL, and it's very clear. I uh, it takes time, man. You you do your studs, and and well, you. and you know, and and on that note, you know, talking about terminal and all that, that wasn't the first acting you've done. I mean, this goes way back, but I mm -hmm. I do want to button a little bit on terminal. You play Boozer in there, you know. Mm -hmm. What are your your? But you're not just a character in there. You're also co-producer, but it didn't really start there, you know. Where right. kind of tell me the chain of events that you know from just not not so much finding it, but your your role once this thing kicked off in motion because we'll we'll talk a little bit with Jack and stuff the right. the whatever but once the wheels were in motion one of the things that's always neat to me is your big brother is I feel like I've always had this weird ability to see your future to agree to, mm -hmm. to a degree not like a fortune teller nothing weird like that but there's always a balance of when you say hey I'm gonna go do this well I know this means you're gonna get there you're gonna crush that right then you're gonna go to here and then that's gonna leapfrog into something else. And that's always going to, you don't know how, you don't know how to not move forward. And if you're going to do something, you are going to do it, period. And, Thank you. you know, and, and, and terminal was the same. You started at terminal here mm -hmm. and then here and then, and now I'm talking to the co-producer of terminal. Um, Thank what you. is a co-producer? How did you get that? And then tell us about Boozer. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that order. So. Actually, I'll you tell it in the order you yeah, want because I, I don't know if my order makes yeah, any yeah, kind yeah. of sense, but you um, just tell it. <clears throat> no, um, it, yeah. So once we knew that Terminal List was was green lit, you know that it was happening, which means you know they started the the writing process on it, which then which is pre production all that, which leads into the actual production, right? Um, you know, in the beginning, 
it was, and understandably so, I think I was kind of viewed as Chris's buddy. Let's, we'll bring him in somewhere. We'll do something, you know, and, and to, yeah, yeah, which is Hollywood is, is full of that. You know, a producer's nephew wants to do this, you know, so all that is full of that. I get it. Totally get it, you know, but I knew that I just needed the opportunity to work. I just needed the opportunity to get in there and, and, and move stuff, you know, just let me, let me be an asset. I just needed to be an asset, you know, and so it started off rocky, you know, uh, Chris and I were in Australia when they first, in the beginning of 2020, yeah, 2020, no, 2021, that's when we started filming. Yeah, 2021. So we were in Australia. He was doing uh, Thor. So I was out there with him. And that's when the writing really had kind of already been kicked off. But I just started seeing the scripts at this point, you know. And and um, I'm like, okay, we got a little bit of damage control to do here. You know, we got to we gotta do some work. Well, Chris and I were <laughs> stuck in the same hotel room for two weeks because you got to quarantine when you go to Australia. Yeah, bro. Freedom. Two yeah, weeks, yeah, mm, two weeks, yeah, yeah. and we're talking. You can't leave your you you cannot leave your hotel room there. That's a whole other podcast we could have whole on that. One, the, yeah, you know, freedom yeah, podcast. Yeah, we'll talk about that one another exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, basically, I had two weeks to to dive into this thing, start looking at scripts, and so we started making those changes. And that's where I say that some of those uh, phone calls with Chris and Fuqua and, and David DeGilio, who I'll I'll expound on here in a bit. Um, you, you know, kind of start jumping into this stuff. And I was able to just kind of start throwing some, some ideas in there and, and <clears throat> making a few little changes here and there with the support of Chris and Antoine and Dave, of course, um, get back stateside. And then it's game on. We start filming. We were there for a month. We started filming in March. And so had about a month. Are we still in 20? Yes, sir. 2021, right? We're in 2020. I'm terrible at dates. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 2021. I have to put everything in yeah. here, or I forget. There's probably people that are going to correct every, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So 20 or 2021. Let's 20. call it whichever one. We were filming, or we're yes. getting ready to start filming in a year. You know, Perfect. and so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, man. We, uh, y- you know, once we start showing up on set, you, you know, and and I was able to work. I was able to work and. One thing amongst a lot of things that our father was already always been great at was teaching us how to teach, teaching us how to treat people with respect. You know what I mean? And always, no matter what, no matter if they're on the totem pole, the lowest, highest, it doesn't matter. Treat people with respect. And man, that, that, as you know, is a huge part of it. And, and that, and then just being willing to work, you know? And so I was brought on as an associate producer, to be honest, I don't really know the difference between an associate producer or co-producer. I just know a co-producer is, is mm-hmm. a little bit higher than an associate producer. That's you know? enough of an explanation yeah, that, right there yeah, to me. It's, it's one more And one I don't know if up. there's – because I've researched it to, mm-hmm. to want to know, like, what is the role of a, of a co-producer? You research 10 sites, you'll get 10 different answers, you know. And so I just knew, like, coming on as an associate producer, it gave me somewhat of a voice, but really gave me a title. I had just a title that people – wouldn't just look at me and be like, who are you? You know what I mean? Like, why are you talking to me right now? Yeah. And so, <clears throat> you know, we start in March, the filming process, and I'm in the scene with Chris the first day of filming. So you want to talk about that pucker factor, you know? I'm yeah, like, I could see that being a, oh, yeah. we're doing this. And it's all day. It's all day, him and I. The, the first half of the day is him and I, and then Constance Wu, who plays a character, crushes it, uh, and what did y'all, because I don't think most people realize this, when you do a whole day of filming, what did you guys film, about a minute and a half scene or a mm-hmm. two-minute scene or something for, for a 16-hour day? After cuts, not even that. Yeah. yeah, but you're exactly right, yeah. And that's what I, I don't think, Crazy. you know, a lot of people when they hear, oh, you're making a movie and all this, they they don't realize that it's, you know, 4 a.m. call times and, and you don't go home till 8 that evening, 9 right. that evening, and, and you're putting in 16, 17-hour days and yeah. and you will film the mm-hmm. all day for a 12-second little clip yeah. or something and, and, and or all week for right. that 12-second clip. And, and so, exactly right. so your very first one, you just walk right. That, that was you know, it. though, it, there's, there's something to be said for, it reminds me of, of our stepdad, you know, with, well, push them in the deep end. They're going to swim. Like, yeah. And, and I've kind of always had that mentality as if if we let's just start at the hardest if we're going to do it because yeah. it can only get easier from there That's if we it. just start at the hardest and 
boy, you did that. Yeah, that was it. And thank you. That was it. That was, uh, yeah, tossed in there and sink or swim, you know. And, and I, I mean, everybody can kind of judge for themselves. They'll see. You know, I, I, as our own worst critics, I, of course, look at it. I'm like, gosh, I should have done this different, that different, you know. But it's learning. And I'm, I'm not beating myself up about it. I'm like, hey, back to the drawing board, you know. And that's talking about what you are about this journey, you know, it didn't start right there. You, you know, what very few people outside of you know is I was doing acting classes before I ever got out of the military. You know, I was... You were doing them before you were in the military, not the classes, but and one act play, oh, yeah. Owl Dulce, Texas. That, yeah. You know, you were you were in theater yeah. there and, and making yeah. it happen as well. Good old Miss Pelak. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she got both of us out yeah, there and, and yeah. uh, it was good. And, and for those that don't know... Getting up in front of your small town oh, high school and yeah. doing a play, I had to do Goodbye <laughs> to the Clown, which, remember. which is a great, it, it's actually a good play, maybe not for high schoolers, because I, I played this jester and I had to like cry and sing a sad song right. in front of my whole high school, and it was supposed to be all sweet, and rah, like it was, you know, uh, one of on those you, things, but, you went for it. But, it, but it, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, seals, acting, which is harder? Oh. Because it, I acting to me, one I'm terrible at it. I'm, I'm a big over actor. I, I give wow. Jim Carrey a run for his uh, money, you know. But it <laughs> too hard on it, yourself. It's it's so hard. Like you have to make yourself so vulnerable, you know. 100%. And and acting to me is one of the hardest things. Like I, because not only are you having to to do it, you're having to do it while everybody watches mm -hmm. and everybody knows you're acting, and and yeah. it that's a skill like anything else. And that's one of the things that you just touched on that. You were doing this before the seals, mm -hmm. then you end up back in. But again, people a lot of times just think you're out playing or you're out whatever, but they don't know the hours upon hours of acting classes mm -hmm. and behind the scenes grinding and going up and, and doing a scene in acting class and then getting shredded in front of everybody and, and critiqued yeah, and, right. and, and all the people and, that aren't doing it are critiquing yeah, you and yeah, telling you, you how suck, to be an actor. You know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and, but you take from that what you can mm -hmm. and, and you use it to sharpen you and to mold you and you <clears> keep <throat> moving forward, you yeah. know, and, and, and you're right. And, and that's none of this with you it, through every single thing we're going to talk about. There was really no easy roads. There was no. And even if there was, you didn't stay in that easy lane. Mm -hmm. You picked the route that was going to deliver the most success with with most of the time in life means taking the hard route and doing the hard things because everybody takes the easy route. Yeah. That's why they take it, you know, yeah. but it, it's to do special things. You got to put in special work and extra work and, and yeah. you've done that. Well, you know? thank you. And I, I, I can't not speak on that's great English. I know I can't not go over though. Like what, what I feel like attributed to that fire in my gut, you know, of, of what, what, from early on, I felt like I just ticked a little bit differently. And I'm not saying I'm anything special. None of that. I'm saying, like, I just knew something was a little bit different. And it was started from when you and I were young. You're mm -hmm. four years older than me. Four years is a lot, right? It is. When, Especially growing up. Yeah, yeah. Huge, right? And you've always had the size, strength, advantage, all all of that over me. And when we were younger. I wish that would have stuck around. Uh, <laughs> no. You're, dude, you. I, <laughs> I don't want it to stick around. I, I don't want to test it. Put it that way. <laughs> um, but, uh. You know, going back to when we were younger, and we've talked about this, you know, it's you. you well, to be honest, I was were, a jerk big brother for you, a long time. You were you were a big brother. You yep. you know what I mean? I was. Uh, like, and especially in our time frame growing up, big brothers were just kind of like that, you know. But it because the last thing a big brother wanted from a little brother was to be soft, you mm -hmm. know. And that's and I think you upheld that, you know. It, today they would call it a bully, you right. know. And yeah. I wish my motivation back then would have been good to make you tougher mm -hmm. and all, but i was just a jerk big brother and you're my little brother and i was right. going to terrorize you and you right. angel side y'all both yeah. got it pretty bad and i was right. a pretty jerky big brother well i you know that's one of those things that that was a blessing in disguise and now it's just a blessing it ain't in, dis in disguise you know what i mean it is a blessing it's it's um i remember being young you know i i want to say it was probably fifth or sixth grade maybe seventh grade but having been with and, and dealt with that for years remember thinking like okay there's two ways i can go with this i can lay down or i can get up i can lay down or i can rise to the occasion well you got up and and not only did you get up you got up and you chased me and i i don't know if you if you i recall the moment where you know mom you'd done something to aggravate mom or got in trouble or something and 
you know, a lot a lot of times back then it was get outside. That was our punishment. Oh, Go yeah. outside. Yeah, yeah. Don't come in till dinner. Yeah. Whatever. Well, mom tossed you out and you had to stay outside till dinner. Well, then mom left and you wanted to come back in. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, no. And not on my watch, you know. Oh, and I remember. I remember Mm-hmm. thinking it was so funny as you were going around and you were trying the doors and i was looking Windows. at you through the peephole and, the, mm-hmm. and all that laughing oh yeah and then you you didn't think it was so funny and mm-hmm. you hauled off and, and put a fist through the window and got in and then grabbed a knife yeah. and proceeded to chase me all over the house with the knife and that was about the time i was like you know what i i think i'm just gonna stick to picking on josiah um <laughs> and, and i uh i pretty much left you alone from that yeah. point on because i was right then you showed me that Okay, I could pick on you, but mm-hmm. I have to be prepared to take it all the way. If I'm yeah. going to pick on you, you're going to fight me, right. and we're going to – and that was another thing. Even fighting you with four years difference, it sucked because you wouldn't just roll over and die. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted just the big brother get you in a headlock noogie and you just to roll over, cry, and let's get this done with. But right, right. you started fighting back, and it yeah. started sucking because, yes, I still had size and all that on you, but I, I didn't want it that bad. Like, yeah. I did not want to fight you that bad. And – I remember after I left for the military and, and I did see it starting to affect your mindset and all of that. Mm-hmm. And then when I left for the military it was really when it clicked to me, like how much I loved my brothers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how much I regretted being a turd mm-hmm. big brother all those years. And so when I came back that first time, I was really eager to kind of restart another brotherly relationship Absolutely. as allies. And, yep. but I remember standing in dad's kitchen one time and, I was just, you know, I came up and I was just like, eh, like just messing with you kind of whatever. And boy, you grabbed a hold to me. You were like, you're not going to push me around. I was like, uh, whoa, no, I'm not. Like, uh, I was just kidding, <laughs> dude. Like, you know, and, yeah. but it was that whole, yeah. you could have been a victim. Right. Or you could use it to harden you and That's sharpen it. you and yep. and reject the idea of being a victim and, and use it to, to harden you, to crush things. And that's. And I basically became your biggest fan at that point when you yeah. were about a freshman or a sophomore. Oh, freshman. And, yeah. yeah, and I would get out there and I, even in your races, watching you run, mm-hmm. you weren't usually the fastest. You mm-hmm. weren't usually the whatever. But the heart that you put out there, that that was what right. set you apart from people. That was early on to me that you were on another level, you know. Thank and you. and again, not because you biggest, smartest, any mm-hmm. of those things but you refuse to lose. And somebody that that won't lose, you can't beat. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and that was just something that I, uh, that takes me into to, to Campwood. So growing up, there was, there was definitely several moments in my life where I knew you weren't normal, for back, lack of a better term. <laughs> not bad normal, not weird normal, <laughs> right. not, just no, not normal. I don't, yeah. I don't know how else better to yeah. say that, but... You know. A few things pop out in my mind, Campwood and Balmeray. And so <laughs> I'll start with Campwood because we used to live in the, the big city of Rock Springs and, oh, and yeah. about 30 miles away roughly. And I'm going off of seventh grade memory here. So, you know, about 30 miles away was Nueces Canyon, Campwood, I think it was called, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> the dams. And they had these, yeah. it was out at the river. And again, I was seventh grade here, so I remember them being huge, the dams. Like, I didn't you ride your bike to him? We did. You we rode Kenny? from Rock Springs to, <laughs> yeah, me and Kenny Drennan. We rode from Rock Springs on crappy bikes. Oh, like, like jalopies. Like bad bikes. <laughs> and and this is like up and down hills and stuff. And yeah. we rode these stupid things and we got there. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm not riding back. Like, I'm going to call our parents to come get us. Yeah. And that went over like a lead balloon. Yeah, mom and them showed up. Daryl actually was kind of, he's like, all right. Uh, all right. Yeah. Like, y'all rode your bike like, <laughs> respect and that, that bike sucks. Like, yeah. good job, you know. And, and mom, not so much. Like, mom, mom laid into us and we got grounded. It. No, we just took off. We were bored, and so we just took off and oh, rode our wow. bikes to another town in seventh grade, thirty miles away in in hill cut. And it well it didn't go well. No, yeah. we we got in trouble and and all of that. But the dams in 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 Campwood, I remember just for a seventh grader being big. And I remember we went to go. Dad came to see us. And dad loves water. He took us out to go swim. And, and we were out there and we climbed the dams. I don't remember exactly, but it, mm-hmm. it feels like a trek to get up there. And I was seventh grade. So that means Josiah was fifth grade. And that means you were third, yeah. uh, a, a whopping <clears throat> third grade. And I remember as we were all looking over the, the, the cliff, and I remember even in seventh grade being like, yeah, man, that's a, that's a far jump. So I looked at dad like, hey, dad, like, you know, you do this first, <laughs> you know. And I remember dad looking over and be like, man, that's a, that's, that's a long jump. Like, I... I might just have doubted there was another ledge, and he was like, well, maybe you should go to that ledge, you know, whatever. And as we're sitting there figuring this jump out, you just came streaking by 
running by and just <laughs> went right past of us, nothing, and just yelled and rah, like a Geronimo, like yeah. right off the deal and just jumped. <laughs> And we all that. just watched you, and I remember like, oh heck no, like, <laughs> dang it, you know. And and I was instantly like so mad at. Well, one, I was like, dude, you're nuts and crazy and whatever. But I was instantly mad at you too because I'm big brother, and you yeah. just totally ran past all of us and jumped. But it was so funny, even at that age, myself, dad, ever. We all just knew that whatever that it factor yeah. in you that just had you as a as a third grader just decide to run past everybody and just jump damn the circumstances I'm going. Yeah. It yeah. that stuck out. Like I'll always remember that. Dad always remembers that. And then I'll take it to, to Balmeray State Park, you know, and, and Balmeray, for those that don't know, it's a spring fed pool. And mm-hmm. in the deep end it's twenty five feet. Yeah. And it's got rocks and fish and turtles and all this. It's like an aquarium, but it's a giant, massive pool and, and People go to that thing to scuba dive, to learn to scuba yep. dive because of the depth. Well, you know, and you could rent those big giant inner tubes and, and float yeah. on those. And, and we that's what us normal kids would do is we would go on there with dad and we'd hang out on the tube and, and fall off the tube, get back on. But not you. You and this, I'm pretty sure you were even younger than third grade because mm-hmm. we went to Balmeray sure, young. Yeah. But you went over and got a rock, and you were third grade or younger, so the rock probably weighed more than you did. And you would go down to the deep end. And also what I'm about to say, I look back on our parents and I'm like, <laughs> I love you guys, but man, they let us do a lot of like, a little bit different, I don't know huh? if I'll let Truman do some of these yeah. things, but I mean, I want to say I would, but, yeah. but you would go get this rock and you go down to the deep end and you just fall down there and you'd sink. And I remember from the, from the top of the water, looking down with my mask and <clears throat> watching the shock on these scuba divers that were mm-hmm. down there with their instructors going through. And then here comes this little second, third grader floats all the way down to the bottom with a rock (laughs) waving at him. And I just remember all these people's faces. And, and I remember being mad at you again, like, cause I'm like, dang it, I can't even go down that far. And, but you you were like a fish and there was just these different moments that it was no surprise when you came and, and, you know, going into the Navy, it was like, you went into the Navy to be a SEAL. Mm-hmm. And yes, it has a 93% washout rate or whatever ridiculous washout mm-hmm. rate it is, but we booked our hotels for the graduation from your school because we all knew they were either going to kill you or you were going to graduate. And it was just that simple. And, and I remember back, you know, I always, you know, especially as we grew older and later in our relationship, I, I always – thought that like you were like Caleb 2.0 you were mm. stronger than me fat you you did you came along and you saw everything that I did or tried to mm-hmm. accomplish and you did it better and and yeah. faster and all these things and and I really looked up to it and there was always a part of me that identified with you because I felt similar and and you know and I always just looked up to you on the SEAL training and stuff and I I always thought in a weird way like you know I could do that I could be with you know we could have been brothers out there whatever mm-hmm. Until I saw that, what was it, the Discovery Channel thing on, like, Class 234. Yeah, and, yeah, and you yeah. were 246, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, and so 234 went through there, and <clears throat> that was when I realized I could not be a Navy SEAL because mm. the water training that you guys had to do when they had them in that deep pool and the guys were having to come up slower than their bubbles and they would start to freak out and they'd start and the instructors them would drag them and pull them back down yeah. under. That freaked me out, you know, and that was one of those things where – I had to be realistic and be like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. And I remember talking to you about it and, and I, and I asked you, and one of the things that your answers to me has forever changed my way of thinking. And, and I have incorporated that into the way I look <laughs> at things now, because I asked you about buds and, and that training and hell week and all that. And I remember when we went to hell week and we saw you afterwards, how beat up you were and how mm-hmm. frail you looked and, and your feet were like rotted and, and the, the cold, the, 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 just the being the cold and all that, mm-hmm. like your feet were just torn up. Mm-hmm. And I asked you, I was like, you know, how did you get through this? When, when 93% of people fell, how did you come out on the other end with your shoulders put, pulled back and look, looking so strong? And you told me, you know, the deal with the, the seals is you had to go ring that bell. And they had to go up and they had to ring that bell to check out. And you said, I took that off at option off of the table. Mm-hmm. No matter how bad it got, and it sucked, and it whatever, but no matter how bad it got, ringing that bell was just not an option. Mm-hmm. And I'm just not going to do it. And when I removed that as an option of one of the things to fall back on, yeah. then winning was the only option. And, and that, is, that has stuck with me for years because 
I think that's the whole point of that bell is to put it there. All you got to do is go ring this bell, and the pain stops, and it's over. It's it's an easy way out, and 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 not even an easy way out. Like they're getting their butts kicked to do that. Like it's yeah. That's the the that's probably the wise way out is go ring the stupid bell and be done with it. Um, You're out there getting frostbit, fish chewing on your toes. It's all (laughs) nasty and gross, and 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 all yeah, all night and and. But you removed that option. You yeah. took the bell out of the equation. Quitting was not an option. Only right. winning. Right. And that, you know, that just permanently stayed in my mind as something that removed the bell. The yeah. bell is not an option. Yeah. We don't quit. We don't tap, you know, and, and yeah. And, and so remove the bell. Yeah. And so what kind of leaders you know, <clears throat> this ties back to when we were younger and it and and it started feeding those things, but what helped you, you know, I know the bullying, I know, but when was it that your mindset really solidified where you chose to be iron, where mm-hmm. you chose to be an oak and not move, like, you know, you've been knocked down, you've been whatever, but mm-hmm. nobody will keep you there. You are going to rise. What is that? Where does that come from? How did you get there? Yeah. Well, there's a, uh, there's a, a lot to that. You know, there's uh it's not one choice that you make one time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to make that choice every single time in everything, you know? And so starting out young, I remember the camp would jump, you know? I I remember sitting there and seeing, you you know, all kind of talk and thinking about it. And I remember that being a moment, you know what I mean? I remember that being a choice, like that being one of those, like, times of, like, I, I cannot go to that lower ledge. I cannot walk down. I don't know why my little third grade mind can't ex- understand that right now. I just know I can't do it. You know what I mean? And so that, how did it go from, I can't do it to I'm sprinting past everybody and leaping off this cliff into the, the, of the river. That's you know? the way we live, brother. You know what I mean? Like we, 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 we don't walk. We, we, we have to attack it. You know what I mean? So I couldn't tiptoe up and then make the decision. No, that that started 20 feet back sprinting and I'm off the edge before I can look at the edge. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm committed. We're in the deep end, baby. Let's go. You know, and that's it. You You know, know, and we gave the parentals a hard time for letting us do that. But also in the same breath, by letting us do that Mm -hmm. and letting us grow and letting us push boundaries and push our bodies and, and what we're capable of doing. You know, if they'd kept us in bubble wrap or not let us, you know, they had me let making me they had me allowed to make road trips at 15, 16 years old, driving two, three, 400 miles by myself. And, you know, and as a parent now, I look back and I'm like, man, I don't know if I would do some of those things, but I don't think I would be here if our parents didn't allow us to, to push past where most people don't to jump off the cliff when most people climb to the lower ledge, you know, and, and that's it especially when we're all climbing down there and you just went as a third grader and blew past us and made us all look bad. I, yeah. I think about half of us ended up jumping after that because yeah. we had to. And I we remember just did. as I smacked yeah. the water, like I wanted to go smack you yeah. afterwards because I was like, I wouldn't have done this yeah. if, if you hadn't. But but, uh, but yeah. it, it's a constant, and you're right, It while every decision molds you and, and, and sharpens you and, and helps forge that iron, you still face these choices of every day of whether to, to be vic- the victim or to, victor. to vi- the victor and, and yeah. to win. And it, and it, it, it can be as small as things of, you know, I'm making this cup of coffee and I screwed it up and I'm getting it all mad and, and, and let mm-hmm. that cup of coffee win. Or it can be something huge and paramount that is changes the way you think for the rest of your life. And, and, right. but it always seems to come down to a choice. Every you know? time, man. Every time. And there's always that easy button. There's always the bell. You can always go and make the, the easy decision, you know. But it's it's that whole deal of, like, you make the easy decisions now, you're going to live a hard life later. You make the hard decisions now, you'll live a blessed, easier life later. And that's it. And it's everything we do, man. And fortunately for me, going into the SEAL teams, once I made it through, you know, and going back to Hell Week, I remember we talked ahead of time, and I told you, like, I don't know at the start of hell week. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. I know that I won't quit. I don't know that I'm not going to break my leg. I don't know what, I just know I won't quit, you know? And that's, that's all it was. That's how it had to be, you know? But then, I mean, fast forwarding into the teams, that's where I say it's a blessing is you were then the, the idea of like, I can slack a little bit and I'll be okay. Like that option's off the table because you're working with people that you were striving to just keep up with, you know, right. you're working with your peers that, 
you, you know, you're the like alpha, the alpha, you know, you're like, mm-hmm. gosh, dog it, you know, like I cannot take a day off. I can't, you know, and so it's, it's a blessing and a curse, but ultimately a blessing because you're, you know, you're like, dude, I'm, I got to pull my weight. I got to be able to pull my weight and be there for them because I know they're going to be there for me, you know, so that's the thinking is kind of done at that point. You just, you know, you're not going to be a turd. You can't be a turd. You cannot be a turd, you know, and so. Well, you can. You can. You, can. you, you may not last, and they may not there, like yeah. you. And That's and I'm it. sure you guys had those guys in your mm-hmm. rings too, like every other yeah. place. But you know, the character that you chose to embrace, and mm-hmm. and those attributes that you chose to to go after, I would say that those are what helped open doors for you later, because people knew you wouldn't quit, and they knew they could be hold you accountable, and you would hold yourself accountable, and you know, and and. As your big brother, there was so many, you know, you've always been so quiet about things. You know, you don't, even within the family, you don't put your business out there. You, Mm -hmm. I was usually the one that a lot of times you were the only one talking to that was, you know, Mm -hmm. most of the time you wouldn't tell the family you had done something until you were all the way through it and complete Mm -hmm. with the exception of me. And we Mm -hmm. would talk through all of it. And, and one, just so you know, that those were always and continue to this day will always be special to me that we have that that likewise that we can talk and 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 be there and and iron sharpens iron and and i feel like we get each other's mindset and and you've helped me to to just especially as i've gotten older and can even more take in the wisdom of it to apply these things to my life and and stuff but during those days it was always because we were still growing up too you know like yes we were young we were in the military we were all these things but mentally we still had so far to grow and and all these things but i remember when you were going through sniper school and you know and none of us knew you were in sniper school except for me and 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 we talked all the way through it and you know being a seal is is hard being a navy seal sniper is even harder if i recall correctly you were a non-prior um when you went in which for civilians, you know, non priors you're on your first enlistment and you, mm-hmm. you haven't gone to a second. A lot of times if I'm, and correct me if I say anything wrong. Man, I, our first platoon, I hadn't even been deployed, which is one of the uh, requirements. Yes, of, sir. Of, yeah, you're yeah. supposed to have a deployment under your belt before you can go in there. So I was a new guy. Going yeah. Into so it. you had all these things stacked right, right out the gate. And, and I remember, <laughs> and, and, and again, coming from a hazy memory um, and, and, and phone calls and all this and, and, and going off of that and something we haven't talked about in 10 plus years or however long it's been now. But I, I remember a lot of it when you started getting towards the, you, you were crushing it. You were doing really well. You were doing all this. And, and part of the final, if I recall correctly, part of the final test was you and a spotter had to go out and I think you had to spot for them and then vice versa. And you had mm-hmm. to make these really long shots. Well, you spotted for the guy, he got his part done flipped around, you took the gun, you had the spotter, and it didn't go so hot. And for whatever reason, I'll pull the big brother card, I'll blame the spotter. You know, spotter didn't come through. That may not be it, and it's spotter if you're listening to this, and that's not exactly, sorry, it's big brother stuff. But, you know, one reason or another, that did not work. And I remember when you called me afterwards, and you're like, bro, it it didn't happen. Like, I, the, the shots didn't go, I didn't make them. And I was like, well, did you shoot bad? Were you, and... You don't make excuses. You never have. You don't to this day. But as a big brother, I blame the spotter, and and we 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 had that debate. And but there was something, and there's always been with you where I knew, I knew, I knew it was not over. And and I remember talking to you, and you're like, bro, I'm I'm going home. Like I'm right. going back to my deal. I did not make it. They don't change the rules. <clears throat> like they. Right. This is what happened. I failed. Done. And no, Jared, you're not done. Like, I don't know why, but you're not why. done. Like, we had that. those exact words. Like, yep. And I felt such calmness and peace in that and telling you, like, you're not done. Like, you yep. don't. I was just so seeing you become your own man at that point that I, the character that you have shown, like, there, there's no way they could see that and throw you away. Like, I just, I knew it. I believe it in my heart. Thank and you, you called me a little while later and you're like, hey, the, the instructor came and he's going to spot for me and we're going to, and I get to go take the test. And I get mm-hmm. to do it again, and I get to shoot on my own merit, and and you know whatever. And then you called me back, and and you were a Navy SEAL sniper, and yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, I. It it was it was it was awesome. Yeah, and <clears throat> but it, it it goes back again because you won't lose, you know. And but I appreciated that those whoever that was, you know, I don't ever know who they were, and you probably have a place in your heart for them, but. <clears throat> Whoever that was that decided to give you that opportunity yeah. to shoot again, yeah. they saw in you what I see in you, yeah. you know, and, and, and uh, wow, you know, yeah. the, 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 you shouldn't have been there to begin with, 
Then yeah. you really shouldn't have been there when you bombed <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Then you walked out a Navy SEAL sniper, yeah. you know. But it, yeah. it was it was the mindset. It was it was those right. attributes, you know, right. that, that that got you there. And and thank you, I appreciate that. That was just special, you know. Yeah. And 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 I remember that phone call. I rem- I remember you telling me like, "No, it ain't done." And I'm like, "Brother, I'm I'm here." I <laughs> like I just. I just got told it's done. You yeah, know, this is done. Like, they're sending me back. Yeah, to my, I'm done. Like, literally you know, and, supposed to pack my stuff up and, uh-huh. and hit the road. And you're like, nah, it ain't done. Yeah, it ain't done. And, and it wasn't. Probably you know? 30 minutes later, the instructor came up. You know, and and that right there is like, you know what? I'm gonna spot for you. Let's go. And I and like you said, I I cannot put it on my spotter. And I and I appreciate you, big brother. And it cannot. I took the shots. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. I took the shots, and they didn't land. They didn't hit. I did. And so, you know, to then have that opportunity, you know, that you called, you called your shot before it ever happened. You know, you called it and bam, your shot landed with me getting another, another chance at it, you know? And yeah, I, man, what a blessing. That's, it's God, man. It's God's hands working through all of it, you know, getting us where we're supposed to be. But that, that was another one of those defining moments, you know, like, oh, okay. Like here I am 20, I think I turned 20, 21 in sniper school. Or maybe twenty two. I'm really good with years. Clearly, um, yeah. I years are, are not my my <laughs> best thing either. Then, and you know, and, and for those who don't know, you didn't you didn't have a perfect military career. You know, there was there was ups and downs. And and I'll throw out another thing that I think that that some of those downs, even in those, if I recall correctly, and and not you know particular things we don't have to get into, but sometimes you just got to hold your ground, even when when everybody tells you that you're wrong on things mm-hmm. or stuff and it may lead to bad stuff, but you still towed the line and you do what you got to do. And, and that was one of the things is even when you were busted down or things happened or whatever, it was like, he's coming back. And yeah. and I was never, man. you never told me something though that, Hey, I did this and this happened. And I was just like, wow, Jared, I'm really disappointed in you that, yeah. that it was always like, good job. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you towed your line on this or that, even despite what may come, you know, and, yeah. and because the military can be pretty stupid in a lot of ways, like where it can be really awesome and it can be really whatever, but it can also be pretty stupid too. And, and, and just mm-hmm. dumb in a lot of areas. And, and, and so it's not always easy to navigate it. And especially as you start growing older and you start becoming your own man and thinking about things and all of that, sometimes that yeah. the structure and all that, it's, it's a lot to deal with. And, yeah. and. Well, so, I, 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 just to touch on that real quick, I, and I appreciate that, but I was, the trouble that I got into, like I got, you know, we've talked about it. It, I did some pretty rowdy stuff, like by military standards, I should have been booted from the military. You know, I got booted from the SEAL teams, you know, <laughs> and thankfully got brought back and then got in trouble again, like <clears throat> so the the men in the chain of command that took a chance on me not once not twice but three times you know like I have the utmost respect for because I I screwed it up I screwed it up you know and it wasn't tactical stuff thankfully it was a young dumb immature kid that was rowdy you know and and everything that I that was punishment wise put upon me I earned, I it probably should have been more, you mm-hmm. know, but had those men in my chain of command and my platoon and troop not like came on my behalf and got my back, you know, my storyline would be totally different. I would have got booted out of the military. Mm-hmm. You know, I had my entire troop getting their dress blues, which seals hate getting in dress blues. We don't do it unless it's a funeral. Basically they all got in their dress blues and went to my second captain's mask, second time losing rank to to get my back you know what i mean and that gives me goosebumps i will never forget that you know what i mean like they didn't have to do that and they did it man and it that is what kept me in and that chain of command kept me in you know and so that would be it would be a whole different thing and i'll never forget that and when i went to buds as an instructor i never forgot that you know kids would screw up do whatever and i was always quick to give them give them that grace you know what i mean because it was showed to me and Man, it would have been it would have been totally different. Well, we were we were <clears throat> mischievous growing up, mm-hmm. but not bad. No, you know, right, like exactly it, right. it. I thought I was a king of pranks in high school. You know, I like to to pull little pranks, and and the teachers let us get away with stuff because 
they knew we weren't turds. Right. You know, like it, we were mischievous and we liked to, to do, but we weren't you know, disrespectful. exactly. Like I, I remember a couple of things with you, like one, you, you may or may not have been the guy that threw black cats down the hallway, lit those and threw those down there. But you yeah. also, which I just, it's still my favorite to this day is, you took down the Declaration of Independence in our high school, <laughs> took it down, took it out of the frame, signed yeah. your name, and put it all back yeah. in there, and yep. became one of the founding fathers. And yeah, I did. To to this that that's hilarious, dude. Yeah. And, and it's but, still up there to it, this day. Um, but you know, I bet you a teacher too has seen it and just left it because it's like <clears throat> that. That's yeah. that's pretty clever, you yeah. know. And and that was the thing. Now as an adult, when I talk <laughs> to some of our teachers from Dulce, and I and I yeah. talk to people, is they were like, "Yeah, you guys got into some stuff, but." You were never turds, right. you know, and you and I would argue that that's kind of, you know, I still like to push like I I still nerd, you know, yeah. and I, I still like to do stuff that we probably should do sometimes, you know, not bad stuff, but just mischievous stuff. Right. I like a good prank or, or whatever. But that foundation and core of who you are, mm -hmm. that's why you could get away with a little bit of mischief yeah. here and there yeah. because you're. You're solid everywhere else. Well, thank you. Know? you. I, I appreciate that. And that's uh, that mischievousness. That's what led. Had I not got kicked out of Miss Nanya's Spanish class, you know, that's what led me. You know, I knew I couldn't go to the principal's office again. You know, so you remember how close mm -hmm. we lived to the school. Mom knew instantly when yeah. we got in trouble. So I'm like, man, I can't go to the principal's office again. And so I saw a Navy recruiter posted up there. Uh, Petty Officer O'Brien was her last name. You know, she had her whole table with all her stuff set up, you know, and I didn't care. I could not care less, especially about the Navy. No mm -hmm. offense, Navy, but I'm like, I'm not. not. I mean, they're not there for us. So no, I don't blame of course. It. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is you know? the Navy. Yeah. You, know? you guys the, got the SEALs, but then you're the Navy. I yeah. get it. I get <laughs> yeah, it. That's you know? it. So. That's it. So, <laughs> you know, so I went and talked to her and I'm like, you know, whatever, just killing time so I could go back to the, the next class, which was computer class. She has all her little books and pamphlets and all that, and I'm just half listening, and then I see that one little pamphlet at the end of the, the table she had set up. It said, so you think you have what it takes to become a Navy SEAL? I'm like, oh, let me see that. Let me see that one, you know, little cocky 16-year-old me. You know, I look at that, and I remember in that moment being like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Like, this is, this, is, this is my path. Cool, no big deal. <clears throat> Knew it, went to next class computer teacher was there i won't say his name but he you know i was telling kendall riley mark rosas manda trejo all my friends that were right there telling them like hey like this is what i'm gonna do and you know at that time i was really short you know five six on a good day 120 pounds you know and 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 so i can't blame the computer teacher but i remember him saying like jared you will never be a navy seal there's no way. Like, you're not going to be a Navy SEAL. And he points at Kendall. He's like, Kendall, I mean, Kendall's a stud. Kendall, yeah, Kendall's a stud. Kendall, day yep. is still Absolutely. a stud. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> just a, a, a athletic phenomenon. Just everything. Just a stud. Great, yeah, great all guy. Around. All the way around. So he, looked, <clears throat> he looks at Kendall. He's like, Kendall, Kendall could be a Navy SEAL. No problem. He's like, you'll never be a Navy SEAL. And I remember in that moment, 16 years old, thinking like, okay, there's something, there's something like in my mind or heart, something is wired a little bit differently because I know at 16, I know something that that 40 year old man doesn't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Same thing with jumping off that, that cliff. I don't know why I, I feel like I have to do this, but I have to do this. And, and with him, I just remember thinking like we're there, we see things differently. We see this world differently. I can't put it into words. I can't articulate it. I'm just going to show you, you know? And that was, uh, that was the, the moment I knew like, that's that was going to be my career path. I didn't know how, when, what, but I knew it was going to happen, you know. And so I don't know. It's a blessing, man. And, and he wasn't the only one that told you that too, because I, if I recall correctly, the the local recruiter uh, oh, yeah. was, you know, recruiters have a special way of being jerks sometimes, you mm -hmm. know. And and <clears throat> and I think a lot of times it's and not all of them, but a right. lot of times it's because they're they're dealing with people that aren't military yet, yeah. and so they feel they have to portray the role of what outsider or civilians think the military is yeah. so it's all whatever but i i because i still to this day i mean you're a grown man you're a navy all these things and you could tie me up and, and flip me you know like oh, a burger but i still feel the need to protect you and and all that and i i remember 
that recruiter here basically telling you, no, you, you're not going to make it. Th- pick your mm-hmm. other job right. because when you wash out of the seals, you're going to have to have your other job to fall back on. And and I remember he brought in some dude because y'all had to go. Luckily, I didn't have to do this, but the delayed enlistment crap yeah, where you had yeah, to go yeah. up to the recruiter station and like do little dorky workouts and right. and all that stuff, you know. And and I remember you went up there and and that guy brought one of the 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 people was home on recruiter assistance leave or something, and he's like, this guy right here, and he like built this dude all up and. You know, you want to be, you need to be like this guy. And he, like, said all this stuff. And then he took you all out to the track, and, and you stomped that dude. Like, <laughs> you stomped like, that yeah. dude. And yeah, that was just, you know, that I learned a lot of my mindset now through watching your mindset then. <clears throat> because it, it, you know, I remember how I got, you know, Robert Ovai always, senior year on the mile relay, when, right before I would take the baton when he would, he would come up and he'd, he'd take his hoodie off and he'd point at me and he'd, showtime, baby. Yeah. And that will always be a part of my life. And I remember how powerful it was. And then when I got the, the joy of getting to go watch you run, we started developing our own deal where I would be down there with you and then right before you took off, it was like, hey, don't just win. Dominate. Dominate. You know, ah, and it, yeah. and it, it that mindset is, is, as I was coming into my own, having you as a brother to constantly, you never let me slack. You never let me do less. You, mm-hmm. you are, and especially as you got older and you, and you really started getting deeper into your faith and, and all of these things that the poor guys around me on, on the, that do the show with me and, and just anybody that knows me, they hear me say over and over and over again, iron sharpens iron. That's right. That came from you, you know, because I, I feel so blessed that as, as young boys to men to all of that, that through our parents, through whatever, that mindset that got put in there and, but you were way crazier than I was in a good way. And, and you were way for being four years younger. It was like you were four years ahead. And, and I feel so grateful for the relationship that we have that times when I wasn't leading like I should, or being the man, the best version of me that I could be, you would never let me get like you would bring judgment or not judgment, but you would correct me in love and you would, you know, all these things. And for being a a Navy SEAL, you were also one of the kindest people I knew, even in your, your wild and crazy days, you know, I would never say you were a fighter. I would say you were a protector, you know, and and you were pretty good at fighting and you may have found a scrap or two here and there. And, and we won't even discuss those, but you know, and, and I'm glad you won most of them. Um, the, the lawsuits were against me, of course. but, but, uh, uh, but, but, you know, again, I cannot tell you over the years what it's meant to know that you're going to hold me to a standard. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to, to do the same with you, you know, and, and sometimes when it's always, it's not fun to hold somebody to a standard, you know, and, and, and there's been different things that I've, that I've come to understand a, a, about the military or being a man or all these things that, Without you, I wouldn't have, have done. And, you know, and it's real neat when I go out. I've, I've been blessed enough to go out and see you in, in L.A. a few times and, and see what you're doing. And as a big brother, it's cool because you're not out there being a little groupie flying around. Hey, guys, hey, look at me. You know, you're a god dang oak. And, and that was what was neat to me as your brother. Whenever I get to go visit and I go get to be a part of your world, people constantly pull me aside and they're like, hey, your little brother – is somebody special your little brother and it's so neat to see that all the lives you've touched not from being a navy seal not i mean those are all but it's like we talked about in the very beginning of this you were jared shaw that was a navy seal mm-hmm. you're not navy seal jared shaw mm-hmm. and and it's so it makes me so proud to see the victories that you have in your life these things that mm-hmm. nobody truly knows i would argue except for me just how much you do and because you don't tell anybody and it's all quiet and you don't have the social media and you don't blast it out. You got me and your mom out there being your cheerleaders and whatever, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's yeah. just special to me that your focus while it's being the best at whatever you do, it's not here per se in the world. You know, it's not in these, yes, we want to win whatever we do, but it's your, your calling is higher. Yeah. And, and since you've found when I say found religion again, you know, you, you kind of summed it up when we talked a, little, a while back. We've always been Christian. We've always mm-hmm. grown up going to church. We've always these things. But as adults, have we always sought God? Like, have we right. sought him out and, and all of that? 
well, you're doing that now. And, and it's helping to, to me, I think that's part of your success is yes, you're good at what you do, but you put yourself second too in a weird way. Like you, you told me one time, you're like, dude, I don't care about any of this. I want to do what God wants me to do to further his ministry, to be where I need to be. And yeah. that's why I think you're finding the, the success that you are because yeah. you're humbling yourself and you're allowing God to work in your life. And by doing so, I think it helps to inspire others. And, and, you know, I know it does me, you know, like I can't go home and be a turd to my wife and kid if, because not only will they call me on it, but you will too, yeah. you know, and, and rightfully so, right. You know? And so no, I, I, I appreciate that. It, it's, <clears throat> it's finding relationship over religion, you know, and, 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 God is always there. Jesus is always there, you know, and I'm, I won't get up here and preach by any means, but it's us that stray, you know, and, and it's thankfully we had our stepfather who brought that into our lives, you know, and we ran from it and I still do. I mean, I can screw things up with the best of them and I still do, you know what I mean? But it is that it's seeking, you know, it's seeking that relationship and the Bible says it's seek and he will make himself known, you know, and that's, I mean, it may not be worded perfectly like that, but that's the gist of it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and our creator cannot lie, you know? And so it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the most real thing that there is in this world. All this stuff is great. It's all amazing, but it's, it's the most real thing. It's the only real thing, you know what I mean? And so it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it is, it's, I just want to be in his will for my life. That's it. If I'm there, I'm at peace. You know, and who knows, it may be something totally different. And I hope that I have a heart that can hear his voice and lead or, or follow where he leads me to go. You know, if I'm, if I'm doing that, there's peace with that. When I try to take the, the reins, when I try to take the steering wheel, it's when it gets messed up. You know, that's why I say I'm the best at messing it up. You know, so that's, uh, that's a whole different story. Uh, Jack Carr is available to hop on if we want to hop on. He just shot me a text if we... Going hot.